It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the brilliant idiots. Um, hello. Um, another week of I guess partially quarantined. At least I'm still quarantined. I I don't think I, so. I, I, yeah. I think people bro. are out there, bro. It seems like people are out there. Have you have you seen what's happening in these streets? Let's let's get right to it. Uh positively brilliant. What a fucking idiot. Uh positively brilliant. The media, man. Bro, the media is like, you know how you be watching Netflix and like you know the Netflix will tell you to um, do you want to watch the next episode? Woo! The media don't even do that shit. The media is like Corona, 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 police brutality, police brutality, police brutality, police brutality, protest, 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 Seamless, riots, bro. riots, 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 Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Mm. They don't even ask us if we want to watch the next episode. Uh huh. That shit is crazy. Yeah, dude. And, 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 it, and it's amazing how they can totally make you forget about what you was just scared of. Oh yeah, we were all terrified of being together and being outside. And now, <laughs> now what? we're all terrified of not being together with people outside. Oh my Did God. Did you go to the protest? No. The fuck is wrong with you, bro? You asshole, you're selfish. Yo, oh, did yeah, you go no. outside? The fuck is wrong with you, you asshole, you selfish. That's the same thing within a week. Yeah, I, I definitely put those people on the what a fucking idiot uh, segment. You know what I mean? Um, like, I, I just don't think that's right. Like, you can't call out people for not being at protests or being on the front lines of protests because everybody fights different and you don't Correct. know what people are doing. You know Correct. what I'm saying? You might be calling somebody out who's paying for the funeral of the family. You might be calling somebody out who's paying for the family to ride on their private jet from state to state to get to the funerals. You know what I mean? Right. You might be calling somebody out who's on the phone with the governor. You know what I mean? Telling the governor to make sure that these, you know, rest of these cops get arrested. You, mm. you know, make or on the phone with the governor or the police chief or the mayor saying, yo, y'all better motherfucking go lock that dude up. You can't just be calling people out just because they're not on the front line. And and furthermore, mm -hmm. who gives a fuck what celebrities got to say at a time like this? Bruh. That Dave Chappelle joke <laughs> is keeps on coming back, right? It keeps on coming back. It keeps and it on applies coming more back. than it applies to more than just Ja Rule. Mm -hmm. mm. So true. So true. Yeah, it, it is CNN. interesting. It's like not everybody can be on the front lines doing brave acts of, um, of you know, of activism, um, you know, like posting a black square on their Instagram feed, like doing courageous things like that is are, is very difficult for a lot of people. You know, that they, they didn't explain that one too well. I don't I don't want to put them in the what a effing idiot part of the show only because, you know, it was a it was well intentioned. Mm -hmm. but they should have came up with another word other than black out because what they were trying to say was all black everything that's what they should have said mm. they should have said today is all black everything make sure that you post black news which is also kind of weird because it's all black news anyway what else are we <laughs> like, posting bro <laughs> like what else are we put like i mean it's just like no selfies or yeah, but when people post a selfie, I like I actually like when people are posting selfies and stuff like that during this time because you get to see like where they are and where they exist and what world they exist in. So it's really nice. It's refreshing. When someone posts a, like a duck lip picture and then with a swipe up to their fucking OnlyFans during this time, <laughs> you get to see where their priorities are. And isn't that nice? Don't you want to see that? Why are we bullying people into not showing us who they really are. Why not let people expose themselves and then yeah. take note like, oh, okay, that's how it is. All right, I see but, how but, it is. But, but, but also, if we do that, then we're acting just as programmed as the media, right? Because, Elaborate. Meaning like, if we just switch with whatever's going on, like if you wake up in the morning and you want to post a funny meme, are you not supposed to put post a funny meme? Just because of everything else that's going on in the world, why can't you do both? Why can't I post a funny meme? And then if I want to post something about, you know, the protest or, you know, post something about dismantling, dismantling white supremacy, why can't I do that? 
Nobody gets mad at Ben and Jerry's. Ben and Jerry's can have one post about their new goddamn, you know, freaking strawberry nut crunch ice cream. And then the next post can be about dismantling white supremacy. Why do we act like we can't walk and chew gum at the same time? Yeah, I think that's, I guess that's, uh, yeah, I could see that. I could see it. I don't know. I think, I think we're just in this situation yeah. where, especially white people are in this situation where it's like, look, best case scenario, we want to help in whatever way we can. Okay. We don't know how to fucking help. Nobody's really telling us what we can do to help, but we want to fucking help. Worst case scenario, we don't want to look bad and we don't want to look like the person that they, you know, they really are, which is someone who doesn't care. So they're going to do the bare minimum. And then this Blackout Tuesday thing came along where it's like they gave you a perfect opportunity to do the bare minimum and seem like you're part of it. Yeah, and I feel like be, that's why it was so crippling because everything was trending, I think, in the right direction. There were all these all these good positive protesting clips that were coming out to refute all the fuck shit the media was putting out. Because every time you turn on CNN, is somebody breaking a window or somebody breaking a car. It's rarely, you know, uh, a bunch of protesters protecting a police officer that got like left by himself. You know, you're rarely going to see that imagery. So we were posting all that on social and we were doing a great job of like balancing this race war that the media wanted to push down our throats. I don't think it's a race war, though. No, no. The I think I don't think it is a race war. I think it's actually one of the most unified times in American history. If you go to these protests, you at least see these protests. You see how unified people are, white, black, whatever. I mean, they robbed the van store. I don't think that was black people. Well, uh, yeah, you know? I listen. <laughs> listen, two things. The blackout was um, the, in, the intent was good, right? They wanted to put a pause on sharing your art and promoting your work. And they wanted to use that silence to amplify the voices, the work and the messages of the black community. By the way, majority of people I follow, they're already doing that anyway. So they wanted you to share posts and work by the black community, link the organizations you can donate um, to, to, to our fine resources, share book or video recommendations, share a piece of history, post about music, share how the black community bought so many genres to life, call your local officials. I'm gonna tell you something, I just realized whoever, created this they're not using their social media right they just described how i use my social media all the time and have always used my social media hey would you I'm like always. would you like us to go to the grocery store and then get groceries <laughs> hey you know what we're gonna do tuesday is we're gonna go to the grocery store and we're gonna get groceries at the grocery store it's like this is what's been happening i don't think that i was looking through social media and going oh my god it's disgusting the way that we're presenting uh what's happening right now i was looking through social media and i was like damn yo this is some wild shit happening out there everything was trending perfectly i i think it was an idea that came along and i think it got co-opted and maybe i'm a little bit conspiracy theory schultzy right here but like i think it just so happened that on the same day trump was about to unleash the military on these cities right that was yesterday yeah exactly yesterday was the blackout well it's thursday right now so, but we're recording wednesday but the day before the day, the day before was uh Unleashing the military. Not he talked about it the day before, and then the next day was about to happen, and that's where you saw all these military trucks and these military cars all over cities uh, when, around the when, country. When was the speech in the Rose Garden? That was two On days Monday, ago. Right? That was two days ago. It was a speech Monday. in front. Yeah, it yeah. was yeah. It was a speech in front of the the church, right? So it's like. Mm -hmm. So the next, so the same day that's going to happen is also the same day Hillary Clinton is on trial, right? And is a Democrat. That true? Yeah. See, like, that's I the thing. That's Motherfuckers don't know shit. I don't think that's true. Hundred percent. Go look it up right now. She's on trial saw, for the. Go. I saw people saying that, but I'm like, if Hillary Clinton was on trial, I feel like that would be front page news everywhere. I wonder why it wasn't. No, no. And, and even and on even trial if it wasn't doesn't front page mean news. on trial doesn't mean she's being tried and she's being found guilty of something. It means that she's being questioned, I guess, in this trial. Right? I don't know and if that's true. Let's look it up. It says right yeah, here. I, I, I saw that. I saw that floating around. But it's also the same day as a primary, true. right? So it's like there's these three Definitely things. The primary. There are these th three things happening that 100. percent You, if if you're the powers that be, you do not want people posting about, right? Like you already, there's already all these posts black about people, black people made the blackout. Say again. Black people created the blackout. It doesn't mean just because black people create something with the best intentions doesn't mean it can be co-opted by a bad. Um, partner if you will and it can be pushed in the wrong direction i think they just used the wrong work what they were literally trying to say is all black everything that's all it, it's like a dress code yes but when you use the word blackout you think okay so i'm supposed to be silent what do you mean put a pause on things 
They didn't think it out all the way. Mm -hmm. That's really all it boils down to. If they would have just said, look, all black everything on Tuesday, make sure you flood, flood your social media with the most positive black imagery you can find, the most positive black stories, most uplifting black stories, pieces of history that can, you know, tie into this time. Do that. Post organizations that are, you know, bailing out people in these various places, these protesters in these various places. If they did that, that would have made more, that would have made more sense. It's that term, it's that word. People were you say blackout. That. You think like media blackout. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was poorly worded. Um, again, attention intention is is great, and I try to judge people on their intentions, but when execution you execution matters in this. Say what? I said intention is great, but execution matters more. Execution matters one. more, especially. And I think now everybody's back onto it, but like I don't know if if the powers that be, like, and again, this sounds a lot of conspiracy stuff, but you see a lot of videos of it. You see like these bricks just being kind of like popping up in neighborhoods where these riots and protests are going to be. Have you guys seen this? Seen the pictures I've and videos that. of this? Like my boy Mark was just on the walk in the protest and he looks over to this building. There's just this group of bricks next to the building, right in front of the Yo, building. I'm going to tell you something, man. It's like, what? And like, I'm, not, I, I'm not saying that's not a conspiracy show. All I'm simply saying is as a person who's not born and raised in New York, who got here in 2006, I personally see shit like that all the time. New York is always under fucking construction. <laughs> like, it's literally, like literally, there's always some lumber, bricks, piping. Yep. Like, there's, there's always some shit lying around in New York. No question. It's weird when it's not covered up or it's half covered on purpose. It's weird when they just show up in areas where there doesn't seem to be any construction. And also, we know bricks are flying through windows. Where are they getting them? They went to the brick store. They went to Home Depot. Yeah. Listen, we, like, like who's every, walking around with a brick in their backpack all day, just waiting to throw it into a Louis Vuitton? A Listen, all you got to do is Google. Oh, yeah. Go, you saw the video of the dude of the, well, they handed it to the woman and the yeah, black woman chased that. down the car was like, yo, stop giving bricks to people. What yeah. the fuck are you doing? All I'm saying is <laughs> the, the, the best intentions are often co-opted by bad actors. And if you don't think that there are people out here that are not, are trying to exploit this tragedy, there's a lot of different ways to exploit a tragedy, by the way. Let's, I mean, you got CoinTelPro. CoinTelPro has always existed. CoinTelPro, that's what they do. They're there to disrupt peaceful protests. They're there to disrupt peaceful engagements. That's, that's what they do. But I think, man, I think what's so different and unique about this situation, this is not one situation. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> look up the, um, the brother's name is escaping me. She was in court, right? Big George Floyd, right? I just, yeah. I just put her George, George Floyd? Floyd? Yep. Rest in peace, George Floyd. <clears throat> I've been trying to figure out why th this particular situation has touched everybody so much, mm -hmm. right? And um, somebody was one of my white friends was explaining to me just now. The older white guy, he was like, "Man," he said, I, he said man, "I think it's the fact that it was nine minutes long. Like it wasn't like a a quick situation where you could think, okay, this guy reacted." too soon or reacted too ferociously like this cop literally just sat on this guy for nine minutes the guy had his hands in his pockets he was screaming for his mom like you're looking at that like yo this this is just stone cold murder so mm -hmm. it touched people in a different way so of course that's gonna make people react right on top of everything else that's going on in the world and all the other police killings we saw but once again we're forgetting man 40 million plus people are out of work the unemployment rate is about to touch 20 fucking percent. Yep. People have been sitting home for three months, Schultz. Man, I got shit to do. It's like being in fucking high school for four years and your parents don't let you go nowhere. It's a pressure cooker, it's dog. It's a pressure fucking cooker. It's Are we not paying cooker. attention to what's going on in America? Bro, and this is, listen, I again, I don't want to get conspiratorial. I'm just saying, there's a when you have a pressure cooker like Corona, when you lock people inside, right? I always look at like who are, who are the people that can benefit the most from a situation, right? Corona, you have people locked inside, okay? Mm -hmm. Then you have a situation like the Ahmaud Arbery <laughs> video that drops, right? Yeah, that happened, that, and that, that happened in February. That happened in February, but we get the video how, how much later? Video a came month? out in May. May. February, March, April. May. March, April, May. So you got three months later we get the video? Well, they, they, they have been trying to get the video, but um, they couldn't find it. And then it's like, uh, 
I don't know if they said that they were floating it around on like the dark web, like those dark web white supremacist sites. Right. Yeah. Um, all I'm saying is like, you have this pressure cooker, people are ready to explode. And then the Arbery thing came out and the Arbery thing seems as if it was kind of like held and then released later. Right. The pressure was built. Maybe they thought, hey, once this Arbery thing comes out, the pressure is built. You're going to have people in the streets rioting. And they didn't. It was actually the George Floyd thing that happens next. And that's what gets the people to fucking explode. And it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, before that, you had Breonna Taylor. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, two more people after that. And right. Two, right. And, and yo, not only just Breonna Taylor, like, yo, uh, some cops killed somebody in Louisville this week. Like, I mean, stuff like this happens all the time. Yeah. You know, you, you never know when, when you're going to have these watershed moments that capture the hearts of everybody. But that's one aspect of it. You also have all of these unemployed people who don't know where their next fucking meal is coming yep. from. Like, yo, if you can't pay your bills, if you can't pay your rent, if you don't know how you're going to feed your motherfucking kids, bruh, it's only a matter of time before you bug the fuck out. You think you, you surprise people are looting at a time like this? Right. Really? I was reading this article in the New York Times called The Moral Ambiguity of Looting. And it talks about the three levels of looting. And the first level is um, you loot for food, for survival. The second level is you loot for merchandise to sell. So you have money for survival. And mm -hmm. then the third is just rampaging mayhem because you're fucking angry. You're angry that you're in this position, in this situation. And don't discredit the people who are just pissed off at this fucking administration. Who are just pissed off at the fact that this administration has put them in this position. The fact that they don't like yeah. the energy this administration is giving out. I it's think like it's a per it's a perfect storm right now, bro. Yeah, I think when you're looting for food because you have to eat, I don't find it as bad because your ability to make a choice has been removed by the fact that you need to eat something. So mm -hmm. it's like, I think in order for something to be truly, truly wrong, you have to make the choice to do it knowing that it's bad. It's like, if I have to feed my kid, I don't have a choice. I have to feed my kid, right? So when I go steal an apple from the store, even the store owner might look at me and then look at my kid and go, all right, I understand the situation you're in, right? And mm -hmm. some could make the argument, might make the argument that like black people are in that situation, right? Black people are in the situation where they don't have a choice, where it's like, not this is black, the only Not thing. just black people. Sure. It's, it's, think about all the points. It's more poor white people in America than black people. Sure, sure. Like poor poverty is poverty. Sure. The tricky thing with looting, like there's different levels. We were breaking it down. Like there is protesting, right? Peaceful yep. protest. There is rioting, which is like throwing a, a brick through a window or breaking a window of a thing. Can't be mad at that either. Now here's the thing. With it. Then there's looting. Looting, I think, is a thing that most people have uh, the hardest time accepting because it's impossible to look at looting like it's not enriching yourself off of tragedy. Depends, though. You break it down for me. Because for me, if you see somebody going into Louis Vuitton and then taking some bags, mm -hmm. it looks like you're trying to get wealthy or get merchandise or get money off of a tragic event. That seems selfish, not selfless. When you throw a brick through a Louis Vuitton store, a Louis Vuitton store that you might never be able to shop at because of the systemic racism that you've uh, uh, experienced in your life and the oppression you've experienced in your life, and it stands as this, it stands as this like barrier of class that you have to look at every single day when you do buy something in there. The fucking bitch behind the counter asks you for your ID oh, when you pay whoa, with your whoa. credit card. Do you know what still I'm saying? using that word at a time like this? Say what? You still using that word at a time like this? I never stopped. The B word? <laughs> I never damn. stopped, bro. So it's like, so it's like, I understand that a little bit more because you're fighting the powers that be, right? Um, that kind of resonates with me a little more. But when you steal the thing, you're looting. Like, let's say Jeff Bezos raised the price of everything on Amazon during this time. To me, that's looting. It's like you're taking advantage of this tragedy. You're taking advantage of this tragic moment. Hypothetically, I don't think he did, but let's say he did. I would be like, oh, you're looting. Or like that bitch that was uh, that took a picture as she was like fake helping to put the oh, yeah. wood on the windows. Yeah, I could not. I'm glad you explained that to me. I didn't know what the f Everybody keeps sending me that video. I was like, well, I don't, I don't get what's happening. She's looting. <laughs> She's just looting in a different way. If you're an influencer and you make money with the posts that you post on Instagram and you're taking a picture at the protests and tagging the fucking jeans that you're wearing or you're taking a picture bordering things up, 
You're looting. I'm not mad at that. No, no. It's not about whether you're mad or not. It's the same feeling of disgust that we get when we see people doing it. We're like, that's not what this is about. That's not the cause. That's not why we're protesting. You're doing that for you. You're not doing that for the people that need it. You see, you see what I'm saying? No, nah, I get what you're saying. And nothing you're saying is wrong. I just don't think we can generalize because we don't know. Like, what if I break into the Louis Vuitton store because I want to I grab four Louis back because I know I can take them back to the hood and sell them for fucking a thousand dollars a pop. Now I got four thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? Or if I'm a person who literally has been one of the one of the have nots in this country forever. Mm -hmm. I'm a poor person in this country. This capitalist country has showed me all the luxuries I'm missing out on. Right. The rappers rap about it. The Kardashians wear it. They run commercials for it. I drive past the store all the time and I daydream about having me a goddamn Louis bag. I've been down and out for three motherfucking months in my house, depressed. That shit might bring me some joy. And I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying I can understand the mentality. Yeah, I can understand. I can like understand, none of his, none I of can understand the mentality of somebody like doing something for joy at a time where they're feeling really sad, but I don't think it makes it right. I just think Cause, that cause, there are levels think about to it. wrong. They tell, us about, they tell us about retail therapy, right? They tell the yeah. rich about retail therapy. Retail yeah. therapy is a form of self-care for the rich. You want to know some <laughs> real shit that nobody's talking about right now? Yes. When you loot Louis Vuitton and you loot the fucking Gap and you loot Prada and you loot all these stores, right? You got taste. You got <laughs> taste. No, no. <laughs> Real talk. <laughs> you might be saving them money. These stores are insured for all their glass and all that kind of stuff there. But none of these stores can sell their product right now because of Corona. You can't go into the store, right? So what these places do, what Louis Vuitton does and all these fancy brands, what they do at the end of a season, they burn their clothes. They destroy their clothes. They have them cut up and everything because you can't depreciate the value of those clothes by putting them out in the open market, right? Mm -hmm. So when they burn those clothes, they got to pay to have those clothes burned and cut up and destroyed, right? When you go in and you steal or light them on fire or fuck up all the clothes, not only do they not have to pay to get their shit destroyed, they get paid by the insurance company. So you're actually helping Louis. Don't they have outlet stores, bro? Sometimes they put a certain amount of merchandise in the outlet, but the super fancy ones that have to like maintain their quality, they don't in the same way that you don't just like throw diamonds out in the market because you got to control the value yeah. of the diamonds. So in a weird way, you could be helping these fancy stores. The looters don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> they got, they got their Louis bag. They got their vans. They are happy. And that's and honestly, I think it's, I think the looting is three things. Well, not even three, of course, food for survival, but then, you loot because you might want to get something to sell. Are you loot just because that shit makes you feel good? Yo, motherfuckers are depressed right now. Like, literally, I said that Michael Jordan should open a building somewhere in New York and just put Jordans in that shit and let people loot legally. Like, just <laughs> let them get off. <laughs> like, like, for real. Because people are depressed. They got, you know, stress. They've been in the house for three fucking months. And I'm not making excuses for it at all. I'm just saying if America can't understand why this is happening, we really have a problem in America because we really don't understand the plight of the poor. We really don't understand the plight of the have nots. Bro. I think it's hard to understand the plight of anyone that's not you. Very true. You know that's what I'm saying? Guys, like, yeah. you like, you know when like rich people complain and the rest of us are like, Man, shut the fuck up. Like, I don't want to hear about how your yacht has got barnacles on the bottom of it and you got to get it cleaned and that's difficult. Like, I can't understand that plight. You know, it's hard to understand the plight of anybody. It's not you. You know what we can understand when Poverty. someone say what? <laughs> Poverty. <laughs> that's why it's so unified out there now. I don't know. I think it's like it, it's death. Like, it's like seeing that guy get killed and get his life stripped away. It's like it really taps into everybody's values. And I think that's why there's such a unified front about it is because you see conservatives going Okay, this guy's civil liberties were completely stripped. There was no due process, no innocence of proven guilty. And you see the Democrats who have been saying, look, black people's civil liberties nev have never been there for the beginning. Like, so you have both sides going, yeah, we agree with what happened in this story. Yeah. And I mean, even that's 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 the other element, too. Right. Like you said, uh, I think earlier you said it was a, the media was making it a race war. I don't think they're making it a race war. I just mm, think that for the first time ever. I can't say ever. First, for the first time I've been alive, 
people are finally recognizing white supremacy. They're finally understanding systemic racism. I have a question. Yeah. I mean, I, and I want to get to your question, Taylor, but just out of curiosity, say, so, so go on that. Explain that. I think people are finally understanding it. They're finally understanding that this country was founded by rich white men. Mm-hmm. And that is who always constantly benefits in this country. Like even, even somebody like Donald Trump represents that for a lot of people, right? Because right, right now, Donald Trump, Donald Trump is making everybody feel like niggas because he's oppressing <laughs> everyone. Everybody, <laughs> everybody, everybody feels oppressed. Everybody feels marginalized. They're making, they're telling you when the fuck to go home. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. They, they, he, he's 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 taking food off your table. Now he's got he's threatening the military coming through your neighborhoods and coming through your town. So now you feel shook to death. You're scared in your own country. Mm. Welcome to the ghetto, <laughs> right? Yeah, welcome, welcome. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I think for the first time in a long time, by the way, very impressive of Trump. Got to put him in the positively brilliant. Never seen a white man out white man to white man. <laughs> never seen it. Never seen it. Keep I've going. never seen a white man marginalize other white supremacists. Never seen it, bro. What you mean? Never seen it. He is making other white supremacists feel marginalized. They, they can't control him. <laughs> he really... I never knew a president had this much power, yo. I, I I never did. Did you honestly? Did you think? Did you know a president had this much power? To to what? Tell everybody to go to bed. Just to do everything that he does, the executive orders, the fucking still keeping his businesses when he's president. Like yeah. he does what the fuck he wants to do. Yeah. I didn't know it was possible. I did. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't know. I mean, I I think he's in a really interesting uh really interesting place and I think that like he's fumbling this br- like brilliantly. Like, I don't know if you can fumble something brilliantly. He's doing a very bad job with this, a horrible job, and it comes right on the edge of him I think about to get a lot of black support. It's kind of interesting nah. timing. I think he was this close, like right after Biden's fumble with you. I think black people, if if Trump came through with an amazing plan for black America right after Biden's fumble, I think you would have seen some black people go, all right, let's see what this guy's about. He, he would have had a slight bump, nothing crazy though. I mean, he, he, he like, but he doesn't need anything crazy. Like he, um, in 2016, he had 1.6 million black people vote for him. Mm-hmm. And so I think his, his numbers are at like 3%. All he wants to do is get at like a nine or 10. That's all he wants. So if he if he got that, right? I mean, it's really interesting timing because if he got that, you would have seen, or if he took advantage of that moment, I mean, it would have just really destroyed the Democrats. And now I think the Democrats are in a situation where Biden doesn't have to say anything. <laughs> yeah, no, he does. That's a lie. Don't that's a fucking lie. You think? Joe Bi- yes, Joe Biden still has to go out there and beat Donald Trump, and I'm. And I, but did I you hear this. what Biden said in the in the in the speech that he gave? He was like, uh, "You don't have to shoot an unarmed person in the heart; shoot them in the leg or the arm." No, he didn't. He didn't say that in that speech. What did he say? <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? He did say that. He did say that quote, but he didn't say that in that speech. His speech no, no, was I'm actually saying good. The quote when he said when he was walking yeah, he, around, he said, he, he said, "Police shouldn't shoot." In the chest, they should shoot in the leg. I read that quote and I said, "Put Biden back in the fucking basement right now, son. Like put him back put him on, in on the, the bunker, day, bro. On the day when Donald Trump says he's going to wage war on the American people, on the day that Donald Trump says he's going to make America into a military state, why are you talking about this? And, and why would you say this of all things? And They're why in is the he, streets protesting because they don't want to see people get shot. Period. And Michael he's te- he's telling you where you're gonna get fucking <laughs> shot with his Top Gun glasses. Take those fucking glasses off, bro. You're not a pilot. This guy's driving me crazy, man. Who's dressing him? Who's dressing Biden? <laughs> Who's dressing Biden? We need to get to the bottom of this. Who's dressing it, Biden, bro? His that's ears that's are sticking out more than mine when he puts the mask on. It's not a good look for him at all. And right now, <laughs> when it comes to being presidential, you can't look like Alfred E. Newman. That's what he looks he, lo- <laughs> he looks like he's a Mad Magazine cover with that stupid fucking mask on. <laughs> he gave a, listen, he gave a good speech. I'm not going to go so far as to call it positively brilliant, but he said a lot of the right things. A lot of things that I've been wanting to hear from him because I was waiting for I was waiting for Joe Biden after he came on Breakfast Club and did the UN black shit. I was waiting for him to and I think I said this last week. Remember when Barack had to give that speech after Reverend Jeremiah Wright where he had to talk to like older white voters? Because everybody heard 
Reverend Jeremiah Wright, and they was really afraid of Barack after that. So he had to give this whole speech to older white voters and let them know I'm going to be America's president. Everybody's president. Yeah. 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 Joe should have did that with black people after the you ain't black shit. And he, 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 he did. If you listen to the speech in Philly, it's 22 minutes of him saying how he wants to end systemic racism. He wants to make economic, he wants an economic justice plan for black America. Uh, he, he adopted, um, one of uh, Hakeem Jeffries' bills. Hakeem Jeffries is a black uh, politician from Brooklyn who had this bill that um, bans chokeholds. Mm-hmm. And he, he, he mentioned Hakeem by name and said, y'all want to, uh, this bill should be getting pushed through in the next three days. It shouldn't mm-hmm. have to wait till I'm president. So he, he was really leaning on blackness the way that he should. And, and I said this last night on Anderson Cooper. If, if, if Barack Obama was John F. Kennedy, Joe Biden can be Lyndon B. Johnson. Lyndon B. Johnson was a, a, a person who was a known racist, right? Mm-hmm. He was JFK's vice president. He was a known racist. But when you look, look at his record, he had he the most the progressive civil rights record. bill, didn't he? Passed the civil rights bill. Yeah. Gave black people voters rights. Put Thurgood Marshall on the Supreme Court. When you look at his record. Son, white people are great, He has the most great, progressive bro. record of any. Well, no, not all. White of them. people are great. Even when we're racist, we're not racist. That's well, fucking Linda. diversity, dog. Like, think about Can I it. Have a question for real quick? Okay. Hold on. Taylor's trying to interrupt. No, Taylor's getting I have excited. A question. But I'm just saying, Linda B. Johnson has the most progressive record of any Democrat when it comes to race and class, probably over the past 80 years. Like, probably like coming yep. I mean, FDR, maybe. You know sure. what I'm saying? But sure. But, but that's impressive from him because he was a racist. Right. So you're saying if, if Linda B. Johnson could do it, Joe Biden definitely can fucking Joe do Biden it. Joe Biden definitely can do it because you don't Yo, maybe believe at your core that Joe Biden's racist. Joe Biden has created a lot of racist le- legislation. Is it possible that Joe Biden forgot that he's racist? <laughs> Is it <laughs> <laughs> Like maybe he was truly racist, <laughs> but he forgot all about that shit. And now he's like, nah, I'm not racist, bro. I believe everybody's equal. Because I will equally forget about all you motherfuckers by tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering if a lot of maybe these guys. Maybe he really was like, Charlemagne, you're black. Like maybe, maybe it was more of a question. Like, wait, what? <laughs> Listen, that's a good point. But I'm, I'm, wondering if, I'm wondering if a lot of these guys are men of the time. Maybe we're all men of the time. But go on, go on, go on. Yeah, that's what I mean. We're all men of the time. Like yeah. you can go back. You can go back 10 years ago. We were shooting from where we could shoot from. Bro, from the hip. <laughs> from the hip. <laughs> Let him rip from the logo. They used to call they used to call <laughs> Pull up from the logo, Sean. Pull up from the logo, baby. What's up? You know what I'm saying? We, you, we press you record fuck. on the podcast. Within the first five minutes, both of us like, oh Ooh. shit. <laughs> Uh-uh. <laughs> and you know what men of the time do? <laughs> you delete all that shit. Because <laughs> we don't need you going back 10 years Bruh. and then coming back to us 10 years later Bruh. when you didn't understand the time we was in back then. Isn't that, isn't that the best thing about Instagram story? Like you could throw some shit up on there and you're like, you know what? I might not feel this way tomorrow. And uh, Zuckerberg is taking care of that for me. Thank right. you very much. There needs to be a limit. Say what? It's always there. They save in your archive. It does, but it's my archive. It's not like someone can run up in my archive and get that shit. I'm not but sure. Sh- Jokes. What's up? Even when you're a man of the time. Yep. Depending what you were doing, you have to atone for that in the future. Because just because you are a man of the time, you can't blame it on just the time because you still might have hurt people. You still might have harmed people. You know what I'm saying? That may not apply to us. When it comes to, you know, jokes, or maybe it does. I don't know. But I'm talking about when you're an elected official, when mm. you're a politician, when mm. literally life and death is in your pen. Mm. You know what I mean? When you've devastated black communities, when you've devastated families and shit with your policies, Joe Biden has the, has the, has the, the uh, opportunity right now to literally be more progressive than Lyndon B. Johnson. Like, Joe Biden can be the start of dismantling white supremacy in government. If he chooses to. And what would you have him do? Well, first things first, um, you know, atoning. First things it, first, I pop him. Atoning, atoning for <laughs> slavery. You know what I'm saying? Through atoning, atoning uh, for slavery. 
but everything would be about legislations and reparations. So you come up with this economic justice plan to where you are putting money into the black community. You know, you're putting money into housing so you can make these you know, projects look better. You're putting money into the schools to make the school system better. You got to do something with the health care. Right. Because mm. I think it's like eight. How many? It's like 80 million people in America with no health care. Some shit like that. Probably way more. But you got to do something with the health care system. If Corona didn't teach us that nothing will. Mm. Right. Um, you empower people because you're 78 years old. You're not going to be around. So why not put a black woman on the Supreme Court? Why not put a black person as secretary of treasury? Right. Because I just feel like that black person isn't going to. Um, He's not going to d- disregard the, the, what white people want. He's just going to have a focus on what black people and Latinos want. Because sometimes when you're white, you're not looking at the whole scope of things. When you're black, you're kind of forced to look at the whole scope of things. Because mm. we're, looking, we're looking from a different viewpoint. So our viewpoint makes us have to be aware of different cultures and you know the way other people do things. We have to be aware of certain neighborhoods don't go over there. Like it's just a certain level of awareness that you have when you're a minority that you may not have when you're a white person. And that's not a knock. It's just that we're all culturally clueless, but some of us are forced to have to have a clue Mm. about what's going on in other cultures. Mm. Yeah, that is true. You are forced. You have to know that is interesting. Hmm. You you know as a, what, what's what's impressive about you is you choose to go out there and learn about other people's experiences. The only problem is, as soon as you spend a day, you think you're an expert. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Listen, That's I host one Essence Fest, and then all of a sudden. <laughs> you guys think that I think I'm an expert, okay? Shows I is like, you know, Shows is like, you know what's wrong with y'all magazine? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Real talk. I was down. It's like, you know, you're giving me all these tips how to lay edges. It's like, do I look like my edges need to be held being laid, Taylor? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> these edges are laid. Like, my toothbrush bristles are destroyed from laying these edges all corona. <laughs> you know, I listen. Have a question, please. Yes, okay, you may, Taylor. God you damn, are you? Do you feel oppressed? <laughs> I just want to know. It's, it's kind of well. Maybe I should wait. Are you guys going to talk about the rest, the rush interview? Yeah, we'll we'll get to it. Yeah, I didn't see it. I have a question. Uh, but uh, I would like to say something that was really interesting uh, that you, that you brought up me and like I don't take any credit for the way I am. I give that credit to my parents and like my environment. And, uh, but my parents were a hundred percent responsible for that. And I asked them about that. I got this, I got this text message from my boy, Carlos. We went to high school together, Dominican kid. Right. And, um, he's a cop now. And, uh, we were talking and he said something really interesting to me. We were just talking about like back in the day and he would be like, he said this to me, I'll read it to you. He was all comes back to me too, man. Um, I used to be someone, this is Carlos. I used to be someone who thought white people were all racist and oppressed and oppressed minorities, but I'm gonna keep it real. Uh, your family changed that in me. I seen your dad treat everyone that came to your house the same way, no matter black, white, Asian, whatever. And he goes on and he's like seeing that basically like changed the way he thought, because there was an example of a white person that didn't hold those values. He thought white people did. Right. And then he probably carried that throughout life. And I text that to my mom and my mom said something fascinating, man. This shit was this shit was crazy. She goes where I wish I had all this up right now. She goes this. She goes. uh, She goes. It's so great to hear that from Carlos. Uh, But Andrew, dad and I both escaped our upbringing. We fret. We fled our lives and both came to a place where we felt free to make our own decisions about life, race, religion and class. We were lucky we found success and were able to follow our beliefs that all men and women are equal. We needed to leave our old lives to do this. I Mm. guess that is courage. The hardest thing is to leave your family. Even if you know, maybe not them, but the environment that they live in is corrupt. We Mm. gave you and Greg the choice of any religion you wanted to follow. That was our decision. We were glad we had the courage to do that. This is not so easy for people living in various situations in life. I'm glad we were able to live uh, live up to our beliefs. Lots of people don't have that opportunity that your dad and I had. 
And it's really wow. interesting to me that like wow. the reason I was able to grow up in this environment where like, yeah, I had all these friends of all these different races and I was never told to believe a certain way about religion or anything like that. And like my dad and mom just treated them all like my brothers and basically, right? And they had all the, they had these examples of white people that like really treated them well. So I'm sure that affected them and their relationships moving forward. But we had that because they removed themselves from environments that didn't feel that way. It's like they yeah. unplug themselves from a, a, a potentially racist matrix or a potentially, uh, you know, bigoted matrix or like a classist matrix. They re they unplug themselves from it and they recreated it. So I'm like, how do you recreate That's that moving forward? Do you have to unplug easy, yourself? From easily. Those? You, you have to unplug yourself. Dismantling. We have to dismantle this mechanism of white supremacy because what you said just now is so powerful. But think of Carlos. I would like to know why Carlos felt that way to begin with. The reason he felt that way is because that's he how America is in. structured. Yeah, I, I, we. I don't. I've I've been like that my whole life. I grew up down south. I just white man is the oppressor. Where the oppressed? Black people can't get ahead. White people have the power structure. The power structure benefits white people. Like that's just the way America is. Now, is is a lot of it subconscious bias? Probably. Is a lot of it unintentional? Probably. Why? Because if somebody comes to me right now and they're black and they're from South Carolina, I'm going to gravitate towards them more and I'm going to look out for them more. Right. Mm -hmm. Because we have more in common. If yep. I go in for a job interview yep. and, you know, a white person is interviewing me, yep. he might he might be racist. Mm -hmm. He might be prejudiced. He might be discriminatory mm. or he might just don't relate to me. You know what I'm saying? So, so you might come in and he just relates to you more because you're white, you're a male, y'all got more in common. Y'all might talk, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just all a lot of different complex nuances that we have to deal with in this country. But I really feel like that's how you can not create be change. Able to, <clears throat> huh? Keep going. Now I'm going to say we're not going to be able to dismantle white supremacy in this country, systemic racism in this country until the people who really benefit from it acknowledge it, yep. right? Acknowledge that there is white supremacy, acknowledge that there is white privilege, and then intentionally work to destroy it. Like your father and mother intentionally yes. work yes, to yes. have that in the house. So it's it's one of those things where like, I keep thinking like, what do I tell white people? It's, it's not my position to tell black people uh, how to react to this, right? It, but I can tell white people how to react to this. And I can tell white people how to create environments where you can produce someone who had an upbringing like mine, right? And it's like, seeing that shit right there was really fucking interesting how they unplugged themselves from this system that could have affected me. Like, we really wouldn't go see my family that much growing up. And I was always curious as to why. And I think my dad chalked it up to... Uh, you know, like, oh, he gets depressed when he's around his family. And we all just, you know, assumed it was that. But I remember distinct times growing up. I remember once when I was young, an uncle of mine said to me, he goes, uh, so who do you think the top five uh, white basketball players in history are? And it was like, why would you ask a six-year-old kid that question, bro? Like, but that's where, the, you see what I'm saying? That's where the seed starts getting planted. What did you say? Did you say, there's white basketball players? Yeah. Probably. <laughs> I said, John Stockton, John Stockton, John Stockton, Larry Bird, Larry Bird, Larry Bird. John Stockton. <laughs> but, it was, but it was one of those things like, that's the type of stuff I'm sure on some level, maybe my pops was trying to protect me from. You, you know? didn't want those values instilled in you. Just the, and, and like, that's not a hateful <clears throat> question, but- it comes from a place where you're looking at the world in this polarized way, right? You're looking at the world and it's like, it's juxtaposed black, white, where I'm six years old. I don't even fucking know black, white. Like I understand people look different, but I'm not really thinking about it. And no way do I think as a young kid that I'm limited in any way because of my whiteness in terms of playing basketball. So when you ask me, Hey, uh, what are you top five white basketball players? Now I got to start thinking, wait a minute, are white guys not good at basketball? Wait, should I not play basketball? You see how that I'm shit mad. seeps in, I'm, you know? Yeah. I'm mad at your uncle. Cause it feels like your uncle's basketball arguments would be trash. Because <laughs> if he's, if you, can you imagine being racist and not wanting to give no black person credit and you're arguing basketball? <laughs> you try to convince motherfuckers that John Stockton, Larry Bird, then you try to bring Dirk in and somebody tells you he's a foreigner, so now you extra hot. So he wasn't even in the league back then. I was young, bro. That's what I'm saying, <laughs> Kevin McHale. Like who are you? Who are you arguing with me about? 
I know, bro. We probably started talking about like who the best coaches were because we couldn't talk about oh the players. Oh my god! You know, but it, it is interesting. It's like I, now I understand that, and like maybe that's what maybe that's something we see say to like white people or like anybody really. It's like you have to unplug yourself from the system. There's things we can actively do now. We can look up who the district attorneys are. We can look at all all these people. But like moving on in the future, maybe one of the things you do is start you can't un unplug. Say say what? We can't unplug. So well, we got to dismantle. Okay. However you want to talk about it, like I think that there's one legislative way, legislative way where we go and dismantle, but I think within your immediate life, you find the ways to unplug it. And if you got a kid, you know, that is so impressionable and he's hanging out with his grandpa, but his grandpa is dropping that M-bomb every once in a while. Yeah, you got to yeah, know yeah, what yeah. you're putting your kid in front of. And maybe like yeah. my mom said, the hardest fucking thing you could do is limit the access of your family from your family. The hardest thing you could do is yeah. remove your family, but that might be the right thing to do for the future. It's, or you have a talk with the grandpa like, yo, we're not doing that. We're not fucking doing that. You're not saying nothing wrong. Like kids, uh, parents and grandparents don't realize, yo, your outer voice is the kid's inner voice. Mm. You may not be paying no attention. You may, you may not be paying attention, but that kid is. Mm. He heard you say that. He heard you say the N word mm. every time you see a black person. Shit, when I was a kid, my dad... Them white guys drive by and they pick up trucks with their Confederate flags. And I hit them goddamn crackers. You know what I'm saying? Like, literally, that's what I used to hear growing yeah. up. So what do you think my inner voice was telling me? Hmm. When I would see the same pickup trucks Damn with crackers, the Confederate bro. flag. I, I, remember, I remember the first time hearing the N-word out loud was from uh, a buddy of mine in elementary school, his dad. And I know this sounds like a crazy thing to say. His dad was a sweet fucking guy. Probably because I'm not black. But it was a sweet guy. <laughs> Yo, real talk, his nanny might have been black. But I heard him say it out loud. And I was in elementary school. I couldn't fucking believe it. And I didn't even bring it up until we were on a ski lift because I figured that was the safest place to have an MR conversation. <laughs> like, <laughs> but like, like, I just never heard it said by a white person. And I was Did so you ask him why he used it? No, I didn't bring it up to him. I brought it up to his son. And I was just so shocked by it. And I was like, whoa, like, I just couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. it, it it's interesting how it works, right? Like, I remember being in West Virginia. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, and I love, I love, I was in, I think it's Charlottesville. Salute to, you know, Shane Gandy, rest in peace. Mm -hmm. and, you know, Joey, the whole Buckwild gang, Anna, all of them, right? Yeah. And um, I remember being in a single wide trailer with them. It was mm -hmm. me, Duval, Shane, God bless the dead, and this other other white dude and i'm and you know this west virginia bro this is redneck central i mean camouflage underwear like like proud rednecks right <clears throat> but cool as shit right yeah and so i'm me and duval talking using the n-word and the white dude said bro i, I got i got buddies that'll, that'll that'll punch you in the mouth for that and i'm looking at him like who who gonna punch me in the mouth for using the n-word he's like my black buddies don't like that I'm like, I'm black. I'm talking to me and Duval are talking <laughs> amongst each other. But he got offended <clears throat> just hearing me talk like that. Mind you, none of his friends were around. Mm. He just was not accepting of that language. And this was a this was a big white redneck. He wasn't big, but he was I mean, he was yeah, he was a big dude, but he was a young white redneck. Right. Who did not want me using the N word and. And amongst me and Duval, mm. he was just like, yo, I just don't like that because I know my friends don't like that. his black friends. That's I just thought that was like, wow, that's unplugging, bro. That's unplugging, man. And it is an interesting our, thing. It's like saying it. Our, our never being plugged in at all are being from a place where poverty brings you together. More than anything else, like I grew up with Tommy. Tommy was my next door neighbor. Yeah, I never looked at Tommy as white. Yeah. We were just two kids that lived on a dirt road in Monk's Corner, South Carolina. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? There was that great like our, uh, SNL sketch, right? The one about the, uh, it was something where, I don't know if it was Black Je Jeopardy or something, but it basically showcased how similar Southern rednecks and Southern black people are. Do you remember the one I'm talking about? Rural, rural areas. Yeah, yeah. How they have way more in common yeah, with each other yeah. than anyone else, yet they're potentially more what is it mortal enemies or whatever the term is but um black and white are only mortal enemies as much as cats and dogs are 
Yeah. And that's just the truth to the matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, I, it, it's don't, we're, we're, they, we're mortal enemies because that's the way society structured it. And they did that to keep power. The, don't, people, the people that made us feel like that did it to keep power. But don't you think one of the things that we can look at for like one of the pod- positives that we can look at these stereotypes is that like, You've seen how many white people are out there hating this racist treatment and hating this systemic racism alongside the black people. Like to me, that was one of the most surprising things because I thought white people would just kind of kind of sit it out. And then when I saw all the white people out there as well, <clears throat> I was like, oh shit, they're really upset about this. I love it. By the way, that's America's worst nightmare. That's a white supremacist's worst nightmare. Keep going. To see white kids out there fighting next to black kids to see white kids out there screaming black black lives matter so, to see white kids standing in front of you know black men to protect the police from harming them that's why yo when i saw that as soon as i started seeing the rhetoric about oh those are agents oh that's antifa mm-hmm. a little bit of that might be true a little bit sure but it's a better narrative than Oh shit! White kids is really out here fighting because they want a race kids. war. They you know want what? a fucking race war. These news stations I, want a race war. I don't know if they want a race war as much as they want to, because because it wasn't. It was the so, social media started it right, and then I saw William Barr. William Barr was one of the first people I heard say, "Oh, that's just Antifa." Don't dismiss them kids as Antifa. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's white people who just actually fucking care. Which, by the way, has been going on since the beginning of time. Yes, that's why I'm just, glad Showtime's doing the fucking. Uh, was it John Brown movie? Oh, the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. John Brown was a, a we loved black people, fought hard for black people. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like civil rights movement. There was white people there. Like it was always white people on the front lines of the struggle because they weren't even looking at it as a race thing. They were looking at it as a human. Thing. That's what I was saying. Like when we did our piece, it was like you know this idea. And I took one of your bars, which is like, don't talk about checking your privilege. Use your privilege. But the idea was like white people have always used our privilege to help black people, the ones that wanted to help, right? Like Abraham Lincoln used his privilege to help, right? Like when you're desegregating America and desegregating schools, you're using the privilege to help. So that is what you have to do now. I think the question that a lot of white people have is how can I? It's one thing to tell me to do it. How can I? Because posting a black box on Instagram is not... That's you gotta, not how you gotta, li- you gotta lead by example like your, your parents did. You know what I'm saying? That's I know how to parents. do it with my kids. I know how to do it with my friends. I know how to do it with the people that I give opportunities to. I know how to do that. What is the average you're, person that doesn't have? It? But what about the person that doesn't have any them. black friends? What about the person that doesn't have any connection to black America? What about that but, kid listen, who you, just lives in their bubble? How to look. say what? Open That's, your eyes and look. But but look at what like give me what an actionable item for a white kid that lives in an area where there's no black people. Don't get in the way. Even if you don't have no black friends, you don't got to go out your way to find any. Yeah. Just don't get in the way. Don't oppress people. Don't be Amy fucking Cooper in the park. Yep. Okay. Don't be Amy Cooper in the park when you're mad at a black guy. So now all of a sudden you want to use your white skin. You know now, what I mean? So you want to yeah. weaponize his black skin against him. That's now, why I don't like yeah. when white people say things like, oh, there's no such thing as white privilege. Oh, there's no such thing as white supremacy. Well, how the fuck does Amy know exactly what to say when she calls the police? So the, you know what I'm saying? There's a yeah. black guy here threatening me. This shit been going on since the beginning of time. Of course. That. The, yeah, there's, That's why Emmett Till's dead. The, uh, the privilege argument always gets muddied because I think people look at, excuse me, I think people look at privilege the people who say there is no such thing as white privilege talk about that on a micro level not a macro level right so if if you want to judge privilege based on a micro level and you want to say some like poor trailer park white kid is more privileged than will smith's son a lot of people will go "Ah, well will smith's son is probably more privileged than that trailer park white kid just because he has white skin but the privilege argument is not a micro level it's a macro level so if you pull out and you go this is all the white people and this is all the black people and here are the institutions that are set up to benefit all the white people yeah if you take all of them then you're going to go of course white privilege exists it's the yeah, and even on even on another level with the privilege like if you're that same redneck kid you and Jaden walk into a certain store. Jaden might get profiled. The little white kid may not. 
hundred percent. In, in that white kid walking down the street somewhere, police might walk right past the white kid and grab Jaden up. Sure. That's the privilege of being white. Sure, absolutely. And then you might make the argument, if you were going to make the argument, you would go, oh, well, Jaden will have access to the best education and the best schooling and the most opportunity, et cetera. So it's like, I think that's why we're maybe like a rush type of guy will try to dismantle the idea of white privilege uh, as an argument. But if you look at it as macro, I think if you ask anybody who says there's no such thing as white privilege and you just go pull out and just tell me if you pull out, if we average all the fucking numbers and you pull out, the George Floyd is a perfect example of that. Show me all the other white George Floyds. What do you mean? Like that got killed by police? That got killed exactly like that for forging a $20 bill. Show me that. Like, show me those types of situations. Yeah, I don't know about it's the $20 bill thing. It's going to be rare. Uh, you're going to see yeah, tons of people. You're going to see tons of white people that get killed by the police. There's no question that that does. Yeah, happen. I did. I, yeah, after I did Rush Limbaugh, they, I got too many white people in my mentions showing me people, white people that got killed by the police. 100%. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. See that shit ever? I mean, they're they've done statistical yeah, studies. Read. Say again. Can I ask you a question? Yes, go go. Do you? Oh my think- god! This is why people get oppressed. What? Go ahead, Taylor. Do Yo, you- my agent. I hate you. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got I got to shout out my agent, TJ. My agent is a 50 year old white guy. This is how you dismantle racism. Okay, this is how you do it. This is how you unplug from the matrix and change the people around you. My agent just texted me. You're. <laughs> <laughs> you got your agent. You got your agent appropriating calls. That's right. Oh, I'll take appropriation that? over racism, though. <laughs> Hell yes. I would much rather have a a country where if a a white guy wants to be hip hop, cool. If a black guy wants to be country, cool. Yeah. I would take appropriation all day over Let's racism. Let's go appropriate all you fucking yeah. want. Get rid of the oppression. Get rid of the marginalization. Marginalization. Let's appropriate. Fuck. Fuck the racism. Mm-hmm. I would take that all day. Mm-hmm. Okay, Taylor. Taylor what do you want to say? Question? Go. Okay. All right. What, wanna... what are we going to say? <laughs> <laughs> Listen. This is what, okay, Taylor. No, because this is according to what you kind of said. Go. You know I mean? Go. On Can you any... say something? Silence is violence, and you're not even saying <laughs> but, nothing right now, yo. You're being do you silent. You think that if it was no pan- pandemic. Do you mm-hmm. think that it will be as big this George, say George Floyd still got killed and everything. Do you think it will still be as big as it is? Because like you said earlier, you think it's frustration from poverty and everything else. So do you think that all these other states and uh, countries now, like. Okay, I got, it, I got it. I got it. I'm going to tell you something, Taylor. I was all ready to say, you know how we have to ask an idiot segment. Whenever Taylor asks a question, we're going to call let an idiot ask. Yes. Right. But <laughs> but that was a that was actually a decent question. OK. And yeah. um, <laughs> the answer to it is. Yo, Taylor, yes. you good, bro. I got you. <laughs> Taylor, I got you. Damn. I got you free tickets at Next Essence Fest. Yo, it's canceled. This, <laughs> it's canceled this summer because of Corona. But I'm telling you, next summer, I'm going to have you out there. I'm go, go. You know why? This, this is the problem. Taylor, this is why I don't want this. Taylor got gassed because of the last podcast because people was on YouTube talking about how pretty she is hey. and she's thick. Oh my God. Now, That's nice. I gave now, you the chair with the good light. She just wanted to be I seen. I gave you the chair with the good light, yo. I gave it a good I light. I can't chair. see her. I can't see her. How do I see her? Oh, hold up. Let me uh, tilt the... I'm going to tilt me. the album. <laughs> you just let me know when it's back. You're good. You're going to make fun Oh, so of she's me. not in the camera shot. Oh, Al, can you give me this one? What? Give me this oh, shot. she got her hair slicked back. Uh, on that I knew it. I knew this got, was coming. She got her hair slicked back, got a little bun, little See, shoulders we're not, out. We're not working off this one anyway. No, oh, no but shit. no, can you know. Can you see both of us now, Charlotte? Yeah, I can see both of y'all. Oh, it's lit. But this is what I'm asking for because there are a lot of white people. Yeah. And yeah. not that I'm mad about it, but there are a lot of white people in these protests. And I just want to know what's the alternative. Taylor, here's the thing. You're just realizing why some white people care. That's number no, one. No, and number no, two, I do know white people care. I'm just saying. I don't think y'all Ooh. do. Y'all, y'all dismissing us, white people as agents. No, oh, can I ask a question? True. No, this is interesting. Can I ask a question? Um, are there black people that are just now discovering that there is a sizable amount of the white population that truly does care I about believe black that. rights? I, I do, but I can't speak for all black people, but I do believe that. Yeah. Is I do it, believe are you that. feeling that? Are you guys just, feeling that? Yeah. In a way, like, I, always, I have a lot of, not a lot, but I, the white friends I do have, I know that they are, they're not about what. Of course, of course. Whatever, but, but it's but, easy to go, that's just my friends, instead of going, yeah. that's the, the general consensus. I think, I think we forgot about good white people. But I just the same know way where we were forgot about racist white people during started. Obama. That's what I want. Say again. Because I want to know where were they when, like you asked Russ, 
Why weren't they standing up? I didn't see that many people standing up. Because when... people were busy. You got to understand. Once I'm again, saying. the world exactly. has stopped. Yeah. Exactly. The world has stopped. People are quarantined. 40 million people are out of work. Largest unemployment rate since the Depression era. People are at home. Mm. They literally have nothing to do but protest. They have nothing to do but go out there and motherfucking, you know, rage against the machine as they should right now. That's why I think this is such a beautiful time. I think all of this is divine. I think mm -hmm. God designed everything in this way. God mm -hmm. made everybody sit their ass down for three months so they can have the energy to maybe be out there in these streets for the next three. Mm -hmm. Seriously, this shit could really go on until the election. I'm dead serious. And, and I think they're arresting the other cops today. Yeah, Let's go. But I think everybody's smart enough to know it's not about arresting just the other cops. Things have to change after this. I want y'all to remember when Martin Luther King Jr. got assassinated. Mm -hmm. And I want y'all to remember how for six days after that assassination, they rioted all over America. I'm saying all that to say real legislation changed after people tore up some shit. Yes. And that's what needs to happen now. It's not going to happen. It might not happen under the Trump administration. You know what I mean? It just may not because those guys are very old school and they're not letting go of white supremacy. They they have no reason to dismantle the mechanism of white supremacy because so many of them benefit from I'll it. I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something that I think is true about Trump. And uh, I can't make a statement with 100% certainty on how Trump feels about black people. I think it's very easy to go, Trump's a Nazi, Trump's a racist, Trump's all these things, blah, blah, blah. I can't say how he personally feels about minorities or other races. I will say this, he doesn't want to lose racists as his supporters. That's not saying yeah. all Trump supporters are racist. I'm sure you and I both know people who support Trump that we do not think are racist, okay? Mm -hmm. But he doesn't want to lose racists as supporters. He's not willing to sacrifice that group. And he's made that abundantly clear time and time again. And that might not make him, him himself a racist, but it does make him a coward. He's a racist. Uh, it makes him uh, look, a look, racist. Look, again, again, I'm not going to argue whether he is or not because that's a discussion that like there's really no way to actually prove it. Like someone could go, Charlemagne's a racist. You see all the time he calls white people this. And I could be like, well, I know Charlemagne. I don't see him as a racist. But it, we go back and forth. But it is cowardly to not be willing to snip off people that you know have values that are abhorrent. That's cowardly. So he can't deny his cowardice in that situation. You know you what it reminds me of? What's that? It reminds me of a rapper from New York who won't let go of the 90s sound. <laughs> Is there a specific person I should know about right here? I'm a little bit out of my element. No, no, no. no I'm just uh, saying. It's just like, you know, these rappers who say things like, uh, even DJs, I want to bring the old New York back. We're going to bring old New York back. So yeah, they yeah. just constantly... Coming with that boom, bap, lyrical, mirror, like this yeah, and that, whatever, yeah. whatever. And, 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 <laughs> and don't fly. You don't, you're not going to gain a big audience like that. You're tapping into some old shit that doesn't exist anymore. Meanwhile, if you're Cardi B from New York mm -hmm. or Nicki Minaj from New York or French Montana from New York or, you know, even 6 9 from New York or ASAP Rocky from New York, you've tapped into the new energy of New York. Mm -hmm. You've tapped into the new wave of New York. Or you can even be like a Griselda who can wrap their ass off. You know what I'm saying? And people would say that they remind them of the 80s and 90s, but they're not trying to hold on to that 80s, 90s sound. Trump is trying to hold on to a, 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 a regime, a ideology, a rhetoric that just does not exist anymore. That shit is dead, bro. Yeah, like it's an antiquated shit. ideology, but there's like yeah, a yes. there's a portion of the country, and I think it's a smaller portion, but there's a portion of the country that so. does hold those beliefs, and he is not willing to subtract that portion from his you know supporters and then replace it with people that have uh, better virtues, and because he's not willing to lose them, um, I think that you can question his. I think you can question his courage and question his bravery. I think that's oh, yeah. I think that's a hundred percent acceptable to question. Even the I mean, most adamant Trump supporter, I think you can question someone's courage and bravery when they're not willing to sacrifice what they themselves know is abhorrent and wrong. I'm gonna be honest with you. I think it's a lot of things about Donald Trump that's an illusion. Um, 
I, I've, I've never thought him to be brave. He kind of proved that this weekend when they turned the lights off at the White House while all the protesters was outside mm -hmm. and rushed him to a bunker downstairs. <laughs> right. And then, and then on Monday, he stands in the Rose Garden and just to show y'all he ain't pussy. Yeah, yeah. He's outside. I'm outside. Yeah, 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 yeah. Literally walk out the front door of the White House to walk to a church across the street. You're walking in ahead of everybody just to give off the perception of I mean, being tough. If there was no social media, like if that shit was the 1920s and you saw a president just walk outside while every city in America was being torn down and you didn't see what happened before because there's no social media. You it just looked like that president was just strolling through the park while the whole exactly. country being torn down. You bet. Like, Yo, that's a brave motherfucker. Well, being that you know that it was all scripted. Mm -hmm. and, and calculated you like no i'm gonna tell you what else and that please, is the beauty I, of social I, media I, bro that is the beauty of it is that it um, gets to expose the fake narratives the wrestling if you will it exposes well, he, the well, wrestling of the politics well, well he did that though because he did that because he literally was like i'm doing a press conference at 6 30 in the rose garden i'm sitting there thinking <clears throat> why would you be doing a press conference when they're right outside your shit protesting crazy why would you do it in the rose garden mm. I, already, I already knew it was gonna be some theater of the mind shit he stood on that thing for seven minutes and then he goes and now i'm about to walk somewhere he literally said that he goes yeah. now i'm about to walk somewhere i'm like the fuck is he walking to and then they followed him to the church i'm gonna tell you something else i think is an illusion <clears throat> please don't prove me wrong this week the people i'm about to talk about the female orgasm <laughs> shut up Remember, <laughs> now they talk about the white supremacists and uh, the white militias. Yes. That's going to ride for Donald Trump. Yes. I don't think they exist like that, bro. You ask for it now. Because wouldn't yeah, now be their time to shine? Now. Well, I'll be honest with you. I think a lot of those militias are actually in support of George Floyd and in support of the protests. Because... A lot of those militias, now I'm not saying there's no, there's probably a bunch of racist motherfuckers that don't have any virtues, they don't have any values, but a lot of these militia folk are constitutionalists. You know what I'm saying? They fucking love their constitution. So if you say, hey, you're not allowed to have the freedom of assembly. Hey, you got to go inside at 8 p.m. Hey, you can't carry a weapon during these protests. Hey, they're like, oh, what? we can't? We about to put the military in the street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just saying those militias are literally made to protect people from an overbearing police state. And right exactly. now you are seeing an overbearing police state today. Like, oh, it's our time to shine. But Let's that's what go. I'm saying. Where, 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 where they at? If they was really riding for Trump, they'd be out there. At these they protests. are out there. They're just not really riding for Trump. And there's black dudes in those fucking uh, militias that they crop out of the pictures when they use them for CNN. And they use them I for Fox I'm News. Saying, I haven't seen any pictures. No, nah, there's a... You, remember we were talking about on Flagrant 2? They were protecting the store. Their, their militia came out to... Hey, Al, explain it. So it was um, a, a militia that came out to protect the store that was owned by whites and blacks. Yeah. But when they posted the picture online, they cropped out the black guy. So it just looked like two guys, two white guys with big ass guns in front of this store. But there's a black guy right next to him. Same gun. They're all part of the same shit. It's just like they released... I think it was in... Uh, uh, New England or something like that, this group of white people walking down the street with bats and they're like, Here they, here's a protest to protect the community or something. I'm like, I'm like, first of all, I don't even know the truth about why those people are walking with the bats, but I know yeah. you're stoking the flames of this fucking impending race war that you're going to create by you, meaning like the news media is going to create mm -hmm. when the people themselves actually do not feel this way. The nah, people themselves are very unified in this. I feel you. I feel you. It's going to be interesting, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just I just think that, you know, the biggest thing that we can do right now, I, I like Gavin Newsom's statement when Gavin Newsom was like, look, black people are not the problem. We are the problem. Institutions, we have to hold ourselves accountable. Yes, you do. America has to atone for a lot of this bullshit. The same way that you had, you know, systemic racism, you got to create like systemic retribution. Right. You got to create systemic reform. You got to create systemic rehabilitation. Like you have to. That's the only way America is going to actually move forward into the 21st century the way that we need to, man. Because I'm I, like, and listen, I'm not, I'm not saying Joe Biden isn't a white supremacist. I, I, I think he is because he's just a man of his time. And he might be one of those um, unintentional, you know what I'm saying, white guys who oppresses you 
with just his mere presence and power because he don't know no better. That's why you got to constantly check him. You know what I'm saying? Or he has to have people around him that keep him in check. If not, he's going to get out there in front of the camera and say, you know what? Don't shoot him in the heart. Shoot him in the leg. No, Joe. No. Yeah. You don't want anybody shot. We're tired of police shooting people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like he has to be intentional about going in there and dismantling the mechanism of white supremacy. Like it has to be an intentional thing moving forward because black people can't do it. We didn't create it. Only thing we can do is keep pushing the line on dismantling it and encouraging our white allies and white friends to dismantle it. Yo, we talk about making space. Your parents made space. You make space. You know what I'm saying? People like Elvis Duran make space. Stephen Colbert makes space. All my white friends make space. You know what's interesting, bro? Once you've been unplugged or once you've been dismantled, it's not an active decision to make space. It's just how you live your life. Word. Like, Word. I didn't actively choose out this diverse group of friends. It's just what happens when you're not put in positions where you're going, can I bring a black guy back to my house? You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember my boy Carlos, the first time he had a sleepover in my house, he had to ask his mom permission. And his mom goes, yo, why do white people do sleepovers? They probably going to try to have sex with you. Like, <laughs> like this. <laughs> she didn't understand. Yeah, she didn't understand. Like, it was like, what's going on with that? Like, that's not how things work. So once you unplug, yeah. it's so organic and so easy. It's the le- It's actually no effort. It's zero effort. Mm-hmm. I had mad white friends when I was a kid. That's it. But you have to be unplugged. And you have to unplug yourself. And maybe that's like the first step of if you're white and you're looking for something to do, maybe that's the first step. It's just like try to create an environment where your kids can be unplugged from that. And if it means like, uh, you know, helping them avoid certain situations, certain family members, certain friends, then that's what you got to do to protect your kid. Do you think that applies to white people more or black people? In terms of what? Because my, um, I went to a white school mm-hmm. and my, I remember for some reason my parents always asked me like, are you the only black kid in the ki- in the classroom? And I never understood why they were asking me that. Mm. And then now I think they were trying to just make sure like I have someone, I guess, to- um, That you relate to. Yeah, that I relate to and stuff like that. But they never, but they made sure I, they knew my, I knew my black history, mm-hmm. but they also didn't make me feel like I couldn't have a white friend. Though. Right, right, right. So. Which was smart. Yeah, that's probably why you were able to have them. But I don't know if that applies to a lot of people in the black community. It doesn't because I was <laughs> the only saying. black kid. I was the only black kid in my class and I never got invited to shit. Really? I never got invited to none of the white parties and functions, the little stuff at the folks' houses and stuff like that. And I remember even saying one time, it was two times, there was this little white girl. Her name was, um, I think her name was Jennifer. She used to wear glasses. I really want to know what's happening with her right now because every <laughs> guy in the class liked her mm-hmm. and she literally was had this flavor of love shit going on. Like she literally set it up to where she told everybody, I'm going to pick a boyfriend at the end of the week. This is like, this was sixth grade. Let's go. She said, I'm going to pick a boyfriend at the end of the week. And so every single one of these guys <laughs> were courting her. And I remember telling Cody and John, I'm like, even though I knew, bro, this hurts. God damn. Even though I knew, I didn't stand a chance. I just was sitting around and I was like, guys, you, you think maybe this slight chance it could be me? They're like, hell, nah, nah, no, it's not going to be you. Like, no, no, it's not going to be you. Why? One of them told me because I was black. Wow. I, think, I don't know if it was Cody or John, but one, it might have been Lance. It was Cody, John, and Lance. One of them told me I was It's because now nah, it's because you're black. That hurt. Bro, it is it is crazy how hurtful kids can be, dude. My dad told me a story when he was in middle school. He moved to New Jersey, to Montclair, New Jersey, from Manhattan to Montclair, New Jersey. And he went to school. He was going to the school there, and uh, he didn't get invited to any parties, any parties, any sleepovers, anything like that for the first few months of school, right? As his family's getting settled there. And he didn't really understand why. Like, I guess these kids don't like me. And then he goes to Sunday school one day, Catholic Sunday school. And all the kids at Sunday school look at him and they're like, Larry, why are you here right now? And he goes, oh, I'm at Sunday school. We, we, you know, we finally got settled in and everything's good. And they're like, 
yeah, but you're a Jew. What the fuck are you doing at Sunday school? And my dad was like, no, we're Catholic. And they're like, yeah, but your last name's Schultz. That means you're Jewish. He goes, no, no, we're, we're just Catholic. It's just the last name's Schultz. Literally that next week. Hey, you want to come over? Hey, you want to come to the party? Wow. Bro, that shit hurts, man. I ain't going to I got to talk to my therapist about that one because I felt my inner <laughs> wounded. I'm serious. My inner wounded child, like my whole left side hurt just now. I thought I was about to have a stroke. Maybe, like, my inner is. wounded child was hurt just now thinking about that yeah. shit. Yeah. I remember that shit vividly. The sixth grade was a rough year. That's when I had glasses. That's when you became Manny a bully, Pat. bro. Hurt people, hurt people. Oh, so no, I, I was I was getting bullied a lot then. All my older cousins <laughs> used to bully me for hanging out, hanging out with all the white kids. I wonder if that's why I've never had the the, the taste for white women that a lot of black guys do. Why you didn't have the taste for white women? Yeah. Because they denied you, so. Yeah, I was like, well, fuck her then. Man, shut up, bro. You no. lying ass. You gonna really tell me. Man, you don't. Know. Look at his ass. You really want. I never, now, Schultz, I never had a taste for him. You might have seen me. Man, you know, if you don't part, shut you the seen me, up, You might have seen, listen, you might have seen me partake every now and then. <laughs> I hey, dabble. Bro. Hey, bro, white, white men don't snitch. That's what I'll tell you. I'll, t- <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, white men That's don't snitch. <laughs> That's only one. I was one woman. And I was a, we was on a, it was a week. We was, a, we was in fucking someplace in California I never heard of. Mm-hmm. There's only white women there. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, uh, hey, bro, we might want to keep this moving, bro. Listen, we're doing a lot. Doing, we got any bills do- to pay? <laughs> no. Okay, well, listen, let's do some church announcements to hit a hard reset. All right. <laughs> any brilliant idiots church announcements, Andrew? <laughs> Yo, let's do some church. Let's do some church announcements, bro. I don't know. I don't know what what church announcements you got, man. I don't have any. I be I I I, I just been making a lot of. Uh, You've been busy, bro. You've been doing them call ins. Man, Zoom is a beast. Zoom is exhausting. They got to be something called like Zoom exhaustion, bro. You got Zoom exhaustion? Yes, man. Because I'm always on Zoom calls. Because if I'm not doing a media hit. Like, you know, it's a like, and, and by the way, it's been a lot of things that's been moving behind the scenes as far as like actually getting some, some real change done yep. in our society. You know yep. what I'm saying? Like, I'm not wasting any of these opportunities that I get when I'm sitting with these senators, these mayors, these governors, these mm-hmm. presidential candidates. You know what I'm saying? Like, what is it, re- to, what is it like being a person that is, at the forefront of this movement, like, are you taking time to realize who you are and what you mean to black people? Or are you so caught up in the flow of this that you haven't realized what you've become? What do you mean? Like, I'm sure when you're a kid, actually, I'm not sure, but like, I'm, I don't know if when you're a kid, you're going to sit down and go, wow, man, like one day I'm going to be at the forefront of the black civil rights movement. And I'm going to be considered a very important voice in obtaining those civil rights that we deserve. Like, I don't know if you're thinking that as a kid, but now because of what happened in your life, you are there and you're really? a go-to regardless of you think or not, you are a go-to like they're calling you and asking you to be on because, and I don't want to put too much pressure on you, but they're asking you to be on because they're like, Charlemagne is going to speak for black people. And I think there's a lot of black people that are like, he can really articulate things. I feel but I don't know how to say exactly like that, but the feeling is Facts. true. You feel that way, Al? Yes. So it's like, do, what is it like having that responsibility? Does that weigh I, on I, you? Do you I, cherish I've never, it? What is I, I've never thought about it because I treat it like I treat anything else. Like I'm not speaking for all black people because black people aren't monolithic. I'm really only speaking for myself. Maybe my experiences growing up in South Carolina in a rural area and also living in New York since 2006, I just think I see the world from a different worldview. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know, I just know, I just feel like I know what our people need. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, and I'm not, like, who can't agree that we need money? Who can't agree that yep. America needs to atone for its original sin of slavery? Like, it's nothing profound being said. It's just common sense. By the way, this is the same shit Marianne Williamson got ran off the block for. Mm. <laughs> Marianne Williamson was saying America needs to heal. 
Mm. And in order to heal, they have to atone for its original sin, slavery. Like this is not, none of this rhetoric is new. Fat, uh, Elijah Muhammad, Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, Farrakhan, there's not a black person who ever led any type of movement who is not saying the same things that I'm saying. I get my rhetoric from them. I, I build with my elders. I talk to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I talked to Dr. Claude Anderson. You know what I'm saying? I've, I've been in the room and sat down with Harry Belafonte. I'm on the phone building and communicating with, with people who really give a fuck and have always gave a fuck. Like this, none of this rhetoric is new. Even this mm. conversation about reparations, like that ain't new. Like, like that's, that's what uh, Elijah Muhammad was saying. Elijah Muhammad was like, yo, Matter of fact, give us our land and we'll get the fuck away from y'all. Mm. <laughs> like, like we want separation. They didn't want integration. They wanted their reparations and separation. Mm. That's what they wanted. But everybody's always had these different versions of what they think economic justice looks like for the black community. And, you know, you can take stuff from the old. And you can take stuff from the new. Like you got like my guy Wes Bellamy out there who just he has an economic equity plan that. You know, they got passed in like Charlottesville, West Virginia. Like it's people mm. out there that are that are doing this work right now. So I've never literally thought about it. I pray and just like any other time in my life, God tells me to say certain things and I go to say them. I'm not seeking none of this stuff out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. None of it. I didn't know all these presidential candidates was gonna start coming to the Breakfast Club. Right. I didn't. I didn't know that. Like, right. I didn't. I, I didn't ask. I didn't strategically say, "Hey, I'm going to be a political pundit." Who the fuck wants to be a political pundit? Yeah. I'll, <laughs> like, I'll, yeah. <laughs> what were you thinking? What were you saying, Al? Like speaking for myself, I think it's so impactful seeing you up there because you're able to articulate exactly what I'm feeling and do it in a way that I can't. I can't do it, but you do it. The exact way you talk here on the Breakfast Club, the exact way you talk on Power One Hundred Five, and you look like me. I we both have a fitted on right now. You just in a T. Like I just think the message coming from somebody like that is just so impactful. Well, thank you. You're different. You get on CNN and you're not in a suit all of a sudden. And you're taking away from what I was taught when I was in class about like how to talk, and you have to enunciate everything else. Like you're talking just as you. We're born to talk. She's saying I you can't, can't talk, bro. Shit. But I'm She's saying, saying you can't talk, dog. You gonna let her talk shit, bro? You gonna <laughs> let right. her talk that shit, I'm bro? Saying you're taking a, you're taking away the political or like the stereotype, the archetypical yeah, the stereotype, stereotype. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. how you're supposed to talk during because the yeah. like I've, I've been saying when it comes to politicians, the language of politics is dead. We don't understand that shit. Yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> you know you're, saying? yeah, you're a communicator. Simple as that, right? It's like you communicate. That is how you do it, and that is what you do very well. And um, you don't need to communicate through one fucking, uh, what is it called? What is the the voice, the news voice? So at 9 o'clock, we have the blah, blah, blah story. You know the stupid voice that all these like broadcasters put on for yeah, no reason? Yeah, man. And, and, when you, yeah. and it's just like radio, right? When you get into, when I first got into radio and I realized that, um, damn, the reason people don't have an opinion on radio is because they tell you not to have an opinion. Right. Like, literally, they tell you, you're not supposed to have an opinion. Like, what the fuck you mean I'm supposed to have an opinion? Now, everybody, of course, wants to have an opinion. But back in the day when I started, I could have easily taken the route of being just the. Y'all there? Y'all frozen? No, I'm here. Oh, <laughs> <Y'all are> frozen. <laughs> I could easily have taken the route of just being the, 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 the announcer. You know what I mean? But yeah, I didn't go to school. I didn't have no formal training. So yeah. All I knew how to do was go in there and just. Just talk. And it's the same thing with these political pundits. You realize that they say people of color to be all inclusive. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't just, you can't say black. You know what I mean? Like, you realize that, you know, you're not supposed to talk bad about other politicians. Because all these guys, they be in the Senate together. They be in the House together. Like, you know, like, they may talk shit to each other behind the scenes. But when they get on TV and stuff, even though we might see something that we consider dead wrong, they don't really call it out because it's That's still changed. a job they want to keep their job that's the thing that people don't realize about politics man that, yeah, fuck, yeah. that shit is occupation dog yeah. and talking shit about the people that might be paying your salary or might be donating to your campaign that's an occupational hazard yeah, not a lot yeah, of people yeah, can yeah. handle that 
That's why I think right. the people outside of politics are often the ones that make all the change. The politicians sign the bill, but if you can sway the people enough that the politicians are concerned that they will not have they will not vote for them unless they sign those bills and then put those things through, mm-hmm. then they'll do whatever you want. It's like it's our job to motivate the people and it's a politician's job to stay in office. So we will motivate the people to put that pressure on the politicians to do whatever the fuck we think is the best for the people. But a lot of times That's these right. politicians don't do shit. And I don't know how many of them care. I think the ones that care resonate. You know what I mean? I think you can hear caring in somebody's voice. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I think that you can hear when somebody really has a message, when you, when you, when they're really trying to get something out there because yeah. it's to somebody's benefit, you can tell. I don't think too many politicians have that. Yeah. I really don't. I really don't. And then, and you know, um, I did, I did Rush Limbaugh. I didn't do Rush Limbaugh. Yeah, <laughs> we all did each other. Now, was Rush was Rush the guy that uh, got like the Medal of Honor at the uh, Trump's uh, yeah, yeah, State yeah, of the yeah. Union? That is Rush him, Limbaugh. right? Okay, biggest, biggest, biggest voice in conservative talk radio by That's far. That's right, and has been for like thirty something years. Um, iHeart Media. He works for iHeart. Like I work for iHeart. Mm-hmm. Um, powers that be at iHeart. Hold on. You know. Can you hold this combo because I got to piss so bad and oh, then yeah, we'll do it when I get back. Is that cool, guys? My bad, guys. Coming right back. We uh, I just had to use the bathroom, but uh, while I was in the bathroom, um, I, did you see that they, what's it called it, uh, the murder charge, yes. the Chauvin murder charge? What happened? They upgraded it to second degree murder and they yeah. added the three other guys for aiding and abetting three other cops. Well, they just added yeah, because there was a video that came out that showed them uh, beating, beating uh, George up in the back in seat the of car. the car. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. They showed him beating him up in the back seat of the car, took him out of the car, put him on the ground, put his knee in his back. Like, look, and by the way, man, you know, I'm not going to say who, but it's a lot of times y'all be calling people out and saying that, you know, they're not actively involved doing things, but those are the main people that be making those phone calls. Who? And getting shit like this done. Oh, oh yeah. Jay-Z is out here doing that. I ain't say Jay Z, but Jay Z did. <laughs> I mean, but the, but the governor, the governor of Minneapolis, that's that's. I think it was the governor, the governor of Minneapolis, did shout Jay Z out during a press conference. We're gonna said, we're Jay-Z gonna go over. Personally. We're gonna go over how to say Minneapolis. If there's one thing that we get out of this podcast, if there's one fucking thing that we get out of this podcast, okay, you are adding another end to Minneapolis every by the way, single time we do the podcast. By the way, yeah. when I'm on national TV, that's the only word that I'm thinking about. That I, did I say that right? <laughs> I'd be like mini apples. Mini I'd be like apple. Yo, I'd be wanting to say anything. I'd be like when it when it pops in my mind, I'd be like, say the home of the Vikings, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> the capital say of the home of the Prince. <laughs> say, <laughs> say Timberwolves. All right? <laughs> say anything with Minneapolis. Come on, guy. Come on, get it together. <laughs> By the way, um the they, they're still trying to push Amy Klobuchar too. Cause I'm I'm looking at the, the, the shade. Amy Klobuchar is the one who announced that. Well, she was the promised getting it. arrested. She's a promise. She's part of the whole. She's part of that whole DNC mafia. Not she's there. part of the DNC mafia. She was promised it. They kept her on that fucking debate stage when nobody heard a single that's quote right. out of her mouth. And um, that's just how the game is played, bro. Like they want people that they can control in power. Biden is controllable. That guy doesn't, you know, he doesn't know what the fuck he's saying from one day for the next. So he's controlled. And Klobuchar, she's part of that as well. He puts Klobuchar on that ticket. He's going to lose. Simple as that. I mean, he might lose him. regardless, but that he will not help regardless. him. That will not help, not him. help him. Yo, no, real talk. Even... What is what? Like, I think what is her uh, uh, bottoms? Lance bottoms? Keisha Lance bottoms. So Lance Bottoms had a, uh, a good moment where she spoke out about it. I think it was being like passed Keisha. around Twitter. Um, in these times, I'm not trying to say that these politicians should be opportunistic, but they have to let their voices be heard. And they got to hope that they're saying things that people need to hear because this is where you're going to get that VP nomination. It's going to be made right now. If you yeah, but- kill it right now, if Kamala Harris is killing it right now, speaking to the people and speaking to them in a way that can be und- that is just undeniable, they're going to have to offer that to her. If she just sits in the wayside, it ain't going to work, bro. I think Senator Kamala Harris is going hard. Keisha can't leave Atlanta, though. She's too perfect for Atlanta. Mayor Bottoms? Yeah. <laughs> Mayor. Dude, VP Keisha. VP Keisha is no. fire. No. And then Mayor Bottoms in Atlanta, bro. Senile, 
Dude, imagine we had President Keisha. Mayor Bottoms. Nah, President a, Keisha. Nah, bro. Call me you Keisha. Like, Call so me Keisha. To, okay, okay. She, let's, let's think about it. You're a black bottom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> black male bottom. Dude, what does the world love more than a black bottom? Yo, we should remake Coming to America. Keep going. Have a gay black bottom from another country, right? Dude, <laughs> and tr- try to figure out where he can find a groom or bride. I don't fucking know what, uh-huh. you, what you would call him if it's another guy, yeah. right? So he's looking at the map and they look at, oh, Atlanta, you know, Atlanta. And they already know about the high, you know, amount of gay people in Atlanta. Like, yeah, we got to uh-huh. go to Atlanta. It's a great black city, whatever, whatever. Yeah. And they look up the mayor, <gasps> Mayor Bottoms. And that's what leads them to Atlanta. How disappointing that's a woman. No, you're not going for her. Oh, it's just oh, the fact oh. that they look at that as a sign. Ah. It's like when Eddie them spent the globe and saw New York and saw Queens. He was looking for a queen, a future queen. Oh, that's right. Yes, man. So you spin the fucking globe. You see Atlanta. Boom. You look it up. Mayor Bottoms. Would you wow. not go there? Wow. <laughs> Would you not go there? Uh, I mean that is or maybe maybe it has to be a top. Maybe you got to be a gay top, not a bottom. Maybe you got to be a gay top. Yeah, got to be a top. Yeah, you look, I'm going to Atlanta. Yeah, it's a, it's a highly populated gay city. Yeah, with a mayor whose last name is Bottoms. That's what ATL Sounds stands like for. You know that? What all tops love? No, <laughs> ass to loot. Ass to loot. <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 Absolutely. <laughs> You've been looting that booty for years, bro. Oh, 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 <laughs> we gonna do some damage. Uh, oh, oh, looty booty. <laughs> looty booty. <laughs> oh, so that looty booty. <laughs> <laughs> I want some of that booty I can break open. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I'm going to throw a bottle through that. <laughs> I hope this booty got some insurance. God damn it. All right. I'm going to put my dick through this booty. <laughs> 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 <All right. laughs> oh, booty booty is so stupid. Bro. Oh, listen. Rush Limbaugh is a character. Yeah, tell me. I didn't watch the interview uh, yet. He's, he, he is, 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 I, I truly believe it's all performance. But is is he skilled at what he does? Would you say that this? Oh is- yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew. That. I mean, I knew that already, though. I mean, I've, I I knew that from just listening to him. Right. Like, oh, no, yeah. He's a he's a very good radio personality. Yo, anybody that can talk for four hours straight is good. With no co-host, all right. For four hours straight, is this you and the callers? You're a beast. OK, and he's good at it. But, you know, it's just like I respect the fact that he wanted to talk about Greg, Flo- uh, George Floyd. And, you know, he I respect the fact that he thought what happened to George Floyd was wrong. I also respect the fact that he thought that police brutality needs to end. But you lose me when you don't want to get to what the root cause of the problem is, because if we can't acknowledge the root cause, then we'll never be to ever be able to acknowledge the issue. Right. The root cause is. White supremacy. The root cause is systemic racism. If you can't acknowledge that those things exist, if you can't acknowledge that black people get profiled more, if you can't acknowledge black people get pulled over more, if you, get, if you can't acknowledge black people get treated unfairly by the cops more, like these are statistics that are proven. You're, you're a numbers guy, right? Yep. So if you can't acknowledge that, then we can't really have a conversation, especially when you tell me, he told me, he don't even know what white supremacy is and that he doesn't believe in white privilege. But a caller called him after the interview. A caller asked Rush this. A caller said, um, hold on. A caller said, hi, Rush. I think the follow-up question to the complaint that we need to dismantle the system of systemic white supremacy is what is that system? And I know I have my own perspective about what that is, but I think that as a follow-up question, it will be illustrative if we could get Charlemagne to God to share how do they define that? What is that? Now, this is what Rush says. I think he did define it. Let me repeat what I think I heard him say. He said, white supremacy is the result of the nation being founded by white people who are wealthy for white people who would benefit from the way the country was structured and founded. 
and everybody else was left out. And so that automatically means that all white people from the founding of the country forward have a built in advantage over people who weren't white because the country was founded on principles and laws and systems designed to benefit fellow and other white people. That is what I understood him to say as the definition of white supremacy. How can you break that down so eloquently to a caller? He looked it up. No, he didn't. He knew the whole time. <laughs> what are you talking about, Taylor? You can look that shit up. You can find it. Man, he, he literally answered it 20 minutes later. Yeah. He, yeah. No, he yeah. knew the whole time. <laughs> this is the same person in the middle of a conversation. Mm -hmm. He said to me, look, 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 look. Chow me, chow me, look. My car got keyed. If, if, the, if, the, <laughs> if, the, if the Minnesota Vikings <laughs> would have signed Colin Kaepernick two days ago, the protest would be over. Russ, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, 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 shut the fuck up. You're just a multi-million dollar, hundred million dollar troll. It is fine. You know what I mean? It's cool. I'm not mad at it. I get it. You know, I don't think that conversation was about changing Russell Limbaugh's mind. I think that conversation was about, you know, the people who listened to him and who heard a yep. different perspective for the first time. And same, same with our listeners. They heard a different perspective for the yep. first time. And a lot of times, uh, how do I phrase it? Like, um, conservatives have to be more diligent in their arguments than liberals because they're arguing the tougher thing. Like, liberals are often arguing um, the emotional side. They're like, hey, we need more equity, so we should have, um, what is it called, that thing where, like, you give black people, uh, uh, you have to give black people, like, more interviews and, like, acceptance of schools. Affirmative action. Yeah, yeah. So, like, we need to help out minorities, so let's do affirmative action. Now, a conservative that doesn't agree with affirmative action has to be really disciplined in his argument. Because he needs to convince people that on the surface must agree with this because you want society to be more equitable and you want people to be more included, right? So you have to have a really good argument that's going to dismantle the fact that emotionally we all, not all of us, but a lot of people want to agree with that. So it's, it's difficult to argue, it's difficult for a lot of like uh, liberals to argue with conservatives because they're not as disciplined in their arguments because they don't have to be because you're arguing the emotional side. You're arguing, hey, why don't we treat people better? Hey, why don't women make the same amount of money as money as men? We should pay them equally. Hey, 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 all these things make sense on the surface and you're not going to get that much pushback in a day-to-day -day conversation. So when you're going up against a conservative debate, you have to be just as disciplined and just as detailed in your arguments as they are. And it's and it's just not that often that it happens. But I get it. But, you know, e even with somebody like Rush Limbaugh, he, he's just arguing off a of feeling. Yeah, he but just, like he just, his he just feelings, feels like white privilege doesn't exist. Right, right. But I guess what I'm trying to say is like their feeling they are. They may be arguing off of feelings, but their feelings are considered more morally wrong in a lot of ways. So if you're arguing something that's morally wrong. You have to really figure out a great justification for it so that you can continue arguing. Does that make yeah, sense? Or, or if, yeah, or if you just, yeah, I, I, I get it, but or if you just ignore data, you can't, if you, because even if you are a numbers guy, if the numbers show black people get pulled over more, more or black people get, you know, uh, killed more by police per capita, like if you see all of these numbers yeah. and you still choose to ignore it, it's like, all right, I don't know what to tell you. Right. Or they go know. find different numbers. Right. Because, you know, there's a million different ways that you can chop up some numbers to make it work for but, your narrative. But go check it out. It's fun. It's yeah. online. Um, what else? We, we, I guess we're doing shit we won't care about next week. What else we got, Taylor? Um, about the Trina. Everyone's upset with her. Hmm. And I have the audio. Who is this? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't really hear it. Who is um, this? Trina. Trina? Yeah. I, don't know. I think that's shit we don't care about this week, too. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of, what about I Virgil? You, you care about Virgil donating the fifty dollars and posting it? I don't understand why he did that. Oh, I mean but, you know, I'm not mad at him for donating fifty dollars. You donate what the fuck you want to donate. Yeah. But why post that? Is he detached? He's Does he not know what's going on? Is he... I don't fucking know. Was it an accident? Was it one of those things that... Because sometimes Bro, you donate to those places and it'll... It, you you got to pick on whether or not you want it to blast out. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's odd that he didn't even donate enough money to buy some of his shit. <laughs> like, he would have been better off donating a piece of his clothing or a pair of his sneakers. That would have raised way more money for that charity than the $50. Nah, you're right. I don't understand that. That was weak. But, you know, you know, you know, you know the way to make that right. 
Yeah, step it up. Put nah, some bread in. Not you. No, I'm telling if, him. Oh yeah, if you if you if you if you mad at Virgin, don't buy his shit. Is it accurate to call his donation off white? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying like let's be yeah, honest that was a whack ass $50 you're acting kind of off white right now like you gave you gave you gave you gave uh, you gave them $10 more than you would give a side chick you know what I'm saying take this $40 you know what I mean what the fuck is $50 what you gonna do with $50 what else Taylor J.R. Smith you liked what um, amazing oh, yeah. love it <laughs> salute to J.R. Smith god so, damn it J.R. Yo. Smith was incredible it, um, he should have been a soccer player. Got good, <laughs> good, good footwork. Yo, somebody said uh, J.R. Smith is still a volume shooter, bro. <laughs> can you imagine? And I thought about this. Imagine J.R. playing with them old Knicks. Oh yeah, Anthony Mason, Charles Oakley, Xavier when you McDaniel. Could fight. Yeah, Woo! maybe when you be could a bad bang move. out. Might have been a bad move. Don't do that. Jr. was an enforced it, bro. That, that was a good beatdown because I be seeing some whack beatdowns lately. Yeah. No, he people get it. beat up and like he they don't even look shit. like the person is getting hit hard. Like yeah, he was feet. He was digging into them punches. Like yeah, mm, now nah, he wanted mm. that. Yeah, he wanted. I liked that. it. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Jr. What else? Right, what Taylor else? Um, I just found out Jason Whitlock has been fired. Oh yeah, Jason Whitlock got fired. You know how? You know how much? You know how confident a network yeah, has to be that black people don't care about you, hmm. that you get fired <laughs> during a national <laughs> civil rights protest? <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, just think about that shit, bro. It is hard for corporations to fire black people during this shit. That fat fuck in a fedora yeah, named Jason Whitlock. That hairline thing too for nothing, man. That Wait, fat he bought fuck, his hair? Yeah. That fat oh, wow. fuck named Jason F Whitlock. That fat fuck in a fedora. With the fake hair. <laughs> you did all that cooning, all that dancing, only for the white man to say bye. Like, you really thought you was important. I'm going to tell y'all something. This reinforces what I've been telling y'all and I told y'all a million times. White people don't like a sellout nigga. <laughs> okay? White people don't like a sellout black man. I can't white people like uh, black men that stand on their principles. Or deny. Say that again. <laughs> white people like a black man that stands on his principles and defends his people. Because check this out. Or one that's would, really good at would, shooting and uh, really quick and has good ball handling. We like that too. Uh, you know, we like uh, if they're really good running backs. There's another black oh, guy up. that we like. That's true. <laughs> but but no, but white white people don't like that. Because yeah. why would I trust you not to sell me out? If you don't care about your own people. It's, Jason, I don't know like if it's did. like or not like, but you're definitely disposable. You're dispo you don't you don't bring that to the table. Yeah, it's it makes you very disposable. You know, like his, num you, yeah. his, num his numbers probably were low as shit amongst black people. You know what I'm saying? It's like, why we got you here? Don Lemon could literally pull his dick out and <laughs> on live television and tell the top of the network and CNN, fuck you, suck this thing right here, and he would not get fired for the next two weeks. That's a damn lie. <laughs> For the next two weeks? I don't. That's a damn lie. Bro, I don't believe that. I don't think black people get fired for two weeks. Move, <laughs> what? <laughs> move your computers because you're you're off the screen. But I don't think what? you can fire black people for at least two weeks. Nah. You, you can, can you fire can. black people now. Depends who the black person is, and depends why they're getting fired. If they're black and they on TV talking that black shit, that black power radical shit, and you get rid of them, you're gonna have some smoke. That's what I'm saying. I don't if, think you can be proud black and talking about civil rights and get fired right now. I think you can say whatever you want to say. You got real freedom of speech, bro. You can say whatever you want to say about iHeart right now. They can't fire you. I would never say anything bad about iHeart. I got love for iHeart. I love iHeart. All right. Well, if you didn't like them, you know. I, I, I actually do. I fuck with iHeart heavy. I, you know I, what I'm saying, me. Yeah, yeah. I get it. I totally get it. Um, but yeah, good riddance to Jason Whitlock. I think they need to bring in. Um, I think Van would be good. Van Lathan. Van would be good for that. But I think that I actually think they should bring Jamel Hill in. I think Jamel Hill and Marcellus Wiley would be a good combination. I, I actually miss seeing Jamel on TV talking sports every day. I think Jamel Hill. And Marcellus Wiley would be good for that. Uh, what is that? Speak for yourself. I don't know if that's if that yeah. guy. Colin Cow would speak for yourself. Speak I don't know. Speak for yourself. Uh, Jamel's um, kind of annoying on Twitter. I'll be honest with you. I think she's he, not talking sports. <laughs> yeah, that's fair <laughs> enough. She was always great like at sports. Got, she was really always great at sports. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, she, Yo, was, listen, she was great. She's at sports. perfect. She 
and and she and she's perfect for first of all, Jamel is super intelligent, can talk about anything. Mm-hmm. But when things come through the lens of sports, I think people it's more digestible. You understand what I'm saying? Like, like Jamel was able to be on ESPN mm-hmm. and she would be talking about social justice, politics, racism through the lens of sports. Sports gives it that filter. But now it right? just feels like, yes, I agree with you. But now it feels like, at least on Twitter, a lot of times it's like, oh, one time this owner of this football team uh, nodded in agreement with this guy who six years later went on to tell a black person to move out of the way. So that owner needs to not own a team anymore. Like, it's too extreme. It's too like, <laughs> it, there's no rule. Like, come on, yo, reel it back in a little bit. You know what I'm saying? She, needs, uh, she just, uh, it's, I just think she just, she just needs, um, Jamel just needs that base. Like, I think she dope. wants to help. There's no question where her allegiance she's, uh, is, and there's no question what she sacrificed to have that allegiance and show that allegiance publicly. What happens is if you if you go too extreme, it's almost like boy who cried wolf. It's like if you go too extreme with it, eventually people start tuning you out. But see, I don't think that's what this is what I, I don't think that perception of her is real, right? Because I think people know some people know Jamel because she called out Donald Trump, right? Yeah. And and being that Okay, let me let me backtrack. I received Jamel early on in context, meaning that Jamel is the intelligent person who can talk about sports and social justice and politics and just everything that's going on in the world, right? right. But I received that through the the uh the his and hers podcast, and then it was the his and hers TV show, and then it oh, was. Oh, so you knew who Jamel was Center. from the jump. Whereas a lot of people were like, "Oh, she's I, just I, I, I see her. I see all really of her. Well. I see her in her whole totality." Right. But a lot of people didn't get to know who Jamel Hill was at, um, until she did the Donald Trump tweets, right? Right. And then it, then it, then it, then in their mind, they're like, "Oh, she's the radical woman, probably an activist who called out Trump and mm-hmm. ESPN." Right. You know, uh, her and the ESPN parted ways because of her rhetoric, whatever the fuck. Right. So they have this one perception of her, mm-hmm. which is radical and which is extreme. And that's why I said it would be dope to see her on TV every day talking sports, because now they understand who she is in her totality. It gives it a, it gives it the context that we all who love Jamel Hill have. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. As opposed to just seeing that one perspective of her and you're like, who, why do you, why, who is this activist woman? I, that's the person. Cause I hear that a lot from people. And I'm like, y'all don't know Jamel Hill. Like mm-hmm. Jamel, Jamel gets busy. Like mm-hmm. Jamel, you gotta, you gotta see it in this whole totality. Once you get and the podcast gives it to you too, but I, I still don't think not like sports. Cause we all love our sports pundits, bro. Yeah, we, we love need, our sports analysts. We need some I love Max now, Kellerman. Bro. I love Stephen A. Yes. I, I used to, I love Jamel Hill sports commentary. Jamel Hill was somebody I look forward to on TV every day talking mm-hmm. sports. Like yep. I like Milk Mike Wilbon and Tony Kornheiser. I look forward to that shit. Yep. You know what I mean? I like Shannon Sharp and Skip Bayless. I look ah, forward to great. their perspective. Great, but I would great. love to see Jamel Hill giving me that perspective every day along with everything else. And she's perfect for this climate. Like, well, let's she, do she, it, man. She's perfect for this climate. Should we, right. uh, what do you think? Do some asking idiots? Yeah, one, one more <sighs> Let's the, do like two because um, I gotta get the fuck yeah, out of here. Yeah, we gotta run. Oh. We gotta we gotta do ask an idiot because we gotta get out of here. Okay. Give us two. Give us two good ones, Taylor. Two asking idiots. <sighs> All right. Some um, heat. Some heat, Taylor. Pressure. She got pressure. She got pressure. She got pressure. Pressure, 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 pressure. All right. Um Under pressure. Up and down okay. on me. Um if you're president, what oh sorry, this is coming from Mia D Prince XO. If you were president, what changes would you make in the first 100 days? If I was president, what changes would I make in the first 100 days? Um, that's really interesting, man. Like, what can you make? I would do a, a national apology for you're, reparations. You're breaking, you're, bra- you're off frame. Like, oh, turn the frame. I would, do, I would do a national apology for reparations um, in, fe- in, in February during Black History Month. And then I would roll out a economic, um, uh, economic, sy- economic justice package, systemic retribution package for the black community. And it's probably something that I would roll out uh, all four of my, my years. So if the number that I'm seeing, Bob Johnson says 14 billion, I don't know. I would, I would have 3 trillion, 4 trillion going into the black community every year that I'm in office. 
I'd probably bring back sports. <laughs> white privilege is such a beautiful thing you know what I'm saying <laughs> you know what I'm saying when you're white, yeah, white, man, like, white male privilege is such a just, beautiful hey, thing yeah, man. Y- y'all want some basketball <laughs> hey. hey y'all want some basketball we all go, hey y'all go with that some boxing some boxing some good we got some uh. fights going I honestly, I don't know what you can. So as a president, it's not your job to make up laws, right? You sign laws into power. So I I just truly don't know what you can do as a president. You can can push that secretary of treasury to cut that track. Can you do that? Can you? Because because Trump could Secretary barely get of funding can for the sign wall, off on whatever the fuck he wants. Nah, but he can't even get funding for the wall. He got to go through Congress to get funding for the wall, and then that's shut down, and that's back. So it's like, what I don't know can about you actually wall, do as a president? I know the secretary of treasury didn't have. They didn't have to vote. I don't fucking know what am I talking about. <laughs> That's the thing, right? Like, is it's Just it's talking. such a tricky thing. What can you actually do as president, man? That'd be that's a tricky thing. What would you do within the first hundred days? What could you actually physically do? You just gotta talk. That's what I would do. <laughs> Real talk. I just, I'd podcast with the people, bro. I just, every day, what's <laughs> good? Like, Until you shouts to Blue Chew. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I just talk. Yo, y'all need a website? Let's go to Squ- Squarespace. You know, <laughs> that's what I, that's what I, well, Taylor, of, I think that's all I got because I got to pee and I got to, I got to jump one into more. these All right, last one, go. By Love 3, Ice Ski, whatever. If 2020 <laughs> was an athlete, who would it be? If 2020 was an athlete, who Hold would on, it be? Hold on, let me go pee. Hold on, I got this one. I'm going to go pee. Hold on. All right, go. I let have, me try to think. I think I know. You think you know? Okay, go. What do you think? Um, I think it would be, why is your guy's name? Um, the weird guy, basketball player that, but he's like amazing. He played with Michael Jordan. Why can I not think of his name? Muggsy Bogues? No. Oh, Dennis Rodman. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why. This is interesting. Thing. I would say Dennis. That's an interesting take, but Dennis was super successful. Do you think 2020 is successful? Well, I mean, how y'all made it this earlier, you know, you That's guys- true. Like there's all this unity and yeah. there's all this togetherness, et cetera, but it started out with it's tragedy. Exactly. And that is interesting. Was- Dennis had a lot of tragedy in his life, but- but he, he ended up doing how, some amazing things. Look how he dresses and everything else. He changed, but that's interesting. Maybe Dennis Rodman. Al, what do you think? Hmm. I don't think on this one. I'm not too sure. Yeah, I don't know. 2020 was an athlete. Who would it be? Hey, yeah, yeah. Maybe somebody that like showed us. I don't know. Maybe somebody right, that you showed say? us more about ourselves than we Rodman. thought. Who would you say, bro? I, I haven't said anything. She said Dennis Rodman. What do you I think? I don't know. Yeah, think about it. Think about it, right? How y'all were just explaining Dennis Rodman when the Michael Jordan doc was out. Y'all were saying, oh, he changed the like he changed the game. He's he's the most interesting, everything else. That's what 2020 is right now. But yeah, 2020, people. Dennis Rodman was good. But you guys were just saying earlier how this year could y'all are bringing people together, unity and everything else. Like it's changing. Is it gonna be a change? And you, you were just saying earlier how God put things into place for things to happen too. So well, what that got to do with being an athlete? This is a question. I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's just, if 2020 was an I'm just, I'm, I, I, everything, I do believe that we're in a divine time right now. But if you ask me a simple question, if 2020 was an athlete, I would say ha- a basketball player, you said, right? No, if it was an athlete. Oh, oh, just an athlete in general. Yeah. Oh shit. I don't know. I was thinking basketball. I was thinking Harold fucking minor. Like, we, we thought we it was going to be dope. Yeah, yeah. so much promise. Twenty twenty had so much promise, bro. Like, I mean, yeah. I, I just said, just we, we just thought you was going to be the next. This is Jordan. Yeah, Why happen? Why didn't, didn't happen. happen. Just didn't happen. Didn't work out. Yeah, it's a tricky. I don't know, man. Twenty twenty is rough. Twenty twenty is rough. I don't know. I don't know how to answer that question. We can come back next week with the answer to that one, man. Mm-hmm. But we got to wrap this up, yo. You want to take us out, Charlotte? Yeah, man. Listen, as always, if you think uh, we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right, too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace.